Okay, now it's time to fill in the other of Newton's laws of motion that I've been putting off up until this point, and that's Newton's first law, or N1L. So what Newton's first law says is the following. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest, and objects in motion tend to stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. Okay, so um, essentially what this says is that if you don't um, apply a force to an object, it'll keep doing what it's doing. So this is sometimes called the law of inertia. Um, essentially saying objects are inert. They don't do things unless you make them do things. Um, so one of the things that may seem a little weird about this is, is this just a repeat of Newton's second law? So for instance, if I take net force equals mass times acceleration, and I just plug in net force equals zero, then that's going to imply that the acceleration equals zero, which is basically what Newton's first law says. So it seems like in some ways, Newton's first law is just Newton's second law where we plug in zero. So it's not very interesting in that, in that sense. But there is a really important reason why Newton's first law um, is one of the three laws of motion and we don't just have two laws of motion. Um, in fact, I think there are two good reasons for this. So um, let's take ourselves back to the 1600s when Newton was writing the laws of motion. So back in that time frame, um, the prevailing school of thought for physics was um, based on Aristotle, who was this Greek philosopher um, and scientist and a bunch of other things, but from essentially thousands of years earlier. So um, Aristotle says, um, and this again was way before the 1600s, but this was what people still thought in the 1600s, that um, objects tend to come to rest. Um, and in your everyday life, that's true. If I push on an object and it starts moving and then I stop pushing, you expect it to come to rest. Um, you know, no matter what something is doing, if you have a clock or you know a computer or something, if you just wait a long time, eventually it won't be doing anything. It'll stop doing whatever it's doing. Um, and so it seems like, based on our everyday experience and based on you know the philosophy of the time, um, everything seems to come to rest. And so Newton's first law is actually wildly divergent from that. Um, this is a um, huge. Uh, you know, difference from what people thought it, thought about things at the time. So it makes sense as a starting point that you say, okay, everything you know is wrong, and here's a starting place for why everything is wrong. And then in Newton's second and third laws, go ahead and lay out the um, new rules that we're going by. Okay, so I think that's one reason. Um, it's just that this was so different, it made sense to call this out specifically. Um, but there's another reason as well. So the other reason that um, I think this law is useful to have as separate than Newton's second and third laws is because this tells us when Newton's laws apply. Okay, so you might say, wait a minute, I thought Newton's laws were laws, I thought they should always apply, I thought we should just believe these things to be true. Um, and that's not strictly right. So um, based on Newton's second and third laws, um, we can explain lots and lots of things in the universe, but they don't always seem true. So for instance, if you're in a car and you take a, a turn really quickly, you'll feel flung towards the outside of the car, even though there's not actually a force that's doing that. There's nothing that's pushing you towards the outside. Um, there is no um, object exerting that force on you. It's not a contact force or a non-contact force, there's just simply no force. And so um, what that tells us is that we can't use Newton's laws um, inside that moving car to understand what's going on because it's not, as we call it, an inertial reference frame. Okay, so um, an inertial reference frame is one in which Newton's laws apply. Um, and we'll come back to study this a little bit later. But for now, um, you just understand that if you were doing a um, physics experiment inside a moving car or inside an airplane experiencing turbulence or on a roller coaster, you might get some weird results um, studying it from inside those places. Now, an outside observer who is considering it from the ground would not have any trouble. They could use Newton's laws just fine. But if you are in a moving reference frame, um, essentially if your clocks and meter sticks and stuff are all in motion as you're trying to use them, it can create some weird results. So essentially, Newton's first law says, if objects in motion tend to stay in motion in your reference frame and objects at rest tend to stay at rest, then you're set. Go ahead and use um, the other laws to, um, to analyze what's going on. If you set an object down and it starts moving for no explainable reason, then chances are you're not in an inertial reference frame and you have to um, use some other physics to try to understand what's going on.